uh, you've had a, a long career in radio. I think yeah. more, more than anybody would realise, because I was having a look through your kind of CV, and you've, you've done a lot with radio. But I think most people who, who will be looking at this will be really interested in how BBC Introducing sort of got started. Yeah. And your role in it, which was quite big, wasn't it? I was working for the BBC. In those early days, I was running the Hereford office, um, you know, looking after the radio cars and making sure that the office was all happy and the studio was functioning. Then I was doing, you know, a lot of reporting, working on programmes, putting them together, a lot of behind the scenes stuff, a lot of travel news. Um, and Dan Johnson was working on BBC Online. And this was right in the early days of online. Online didn't have any direction whatsoever. We're creating some local websites for the BBC. Your job is to be local. That was the only criteria. And Dan was a you know a big punk music fan, and he came on board in about 2002, 2003, and started writing all sorts of articles about bands he'd seen, listening to demos, and writing about songs. And for two years, he kept on hammering to management let's stop talking about music and let's actually play it. And two years went by, now it's a bad idea, now it's a bad idea. And I always remember my former boss then ring me up one day and say, I've had this great idea <laughs> and we're going to play some new bands on the radio. I don't think it will last, you know, we'll do it for a couple of weeks and see how we get on. Let's just open up the doors, open up the floodgates and see what we get in. I've told Danny can do the programme but he can't do it on his own, he's never worked in radio before. And I remember at that early stage thinking, I've worked with radio people all my life now, I've been working for, you know, since the age of 14 with radio people. Dan's never even spoken into a microphone before, and now I've got this job to... So we kind of sat down and talked about it at great detail, and said, I'll tell you what, I'll represent Herefordshire, you represent Worcestershire because it's where we're from. And, you know, we're both qualified because you've been writing about this for a couple of years. I've been organising this for a couple of years. And um, we put together a pilot, which we thought was really happy. And about two days before broadcast, the boss got really nervous and said, actually, I don't think this is a really great idea. And our trail had been going out on the air virtually every hour. We've been inundated with CDs by local musicians. And we played him the demo of the first, he listened to the first three or four songs. And he took his headphones off, threw them to the table and said, if every show sounds like that, then we're on to a winner. So he said, see how it goes. We sustain it till the end of the year. It might become bi-weekly. And here we are, you know, seven or eight Christmases later. And we're now getting between 250 and 400 tracks sent to us every week. You know, whether it's through the Introducing Uploader or through people still sending us their albums were just absolutely, you know, uh, lay under a desk with the amount of music that's on, on top of us. But I still listen to every single track that comes in. Um, there's just masses and masses of talent. But what's really interesting and, you know, almost preempting your next question is how have things changed over those years, is way back in 2005, in that June, people were sending in everything and there was no benchmark and now they switch on their radio every Friday or soon to be every Saturday and they hear what comes out of their two speakers and they're thinking oh mine isn't quite that good I'll spend a little while longer on it and then they send it in well with every year that's gone on you know I can now look at some of my top 10 tracks from doing them over the last number of years and I can go back three or four years thinking really? You see Hereford and Worcester introducing it was one of the first ones it yeah, we were about, I think there was a, we can't quite work it out, it was either second or third, um, and that's because Oxford came on board on the same week as what we did, but Northampton had been doing it for about three months before we had. So all of a sudden, Introducing comes on board, playing drum and bass and death metal, and management got very white, they went white, and then um, Radio 1 got very nervous that, hang on, this is what we should be doing. So they commissioned a task force to come to our studios here in Worcester and invited ten bands. It all brought about five or six people each. And we ordered in some pizzas and they sat around and the question was asked by the people at Radio 1, isn't Radio 1 the place where this should be broadcast? And everyone said, 
It's Ninth Fortress, so I'll never get my music in. I've sent my CDs off. I've never heard anything else back. It's the most disheartening thing of the lot. At least we send our music into our local radio station. It's people who we know, we see them out in the streets. And, um, and our music, we feel, is getting the opportunity that wasn't there before. And then the second point of that is, is this what local radio should be doing? And all of those people in there were saying, there's no opportunities at all for my music. We suddenly come on board, we're getting airplay, we're getting ourselves gigs, venue promoters are listening to it, we're playing festivals, you know. And the amount of people who came in and said, I'd have given my right arm for this opportunity 10 years ago. So it started looking towards a platform as to actually, if Radio 1 had been, you know, that bad in, in listeners' eyes, then let's create a, a scenario where we can feed into it. And I remember speaking to, I think it was Hugh Stevens, and he said there's about 35 people here, and we listen to all the music for about eight to 10 hours a day, and what gets sent in. And we only get through about a third. So how do we know that we're playing the best third? The, the best stuff might be in that pile of stuff that we don't get through. So why don't we make better use of this infrastructure and look at the postcodes of where people come from and let them lead the way and let them be the point of contact for the BBC and let's not be an iron fortress and let's be a place where you know if you're writing music in Worcester you send it to the BBC in Worcester if you're in Sheffield you see it send it to the BBC in Sheffield and when it comes to formulating national playlists we can ask our man in Sheffield we can ask our man in Bristol our man in Worcester who's hot, who's going to be the best act of the year, and they're no. And that's pretty much the birthplace of how introducing come about. Well, Dan being from online, yeah. you know, was pretty instrumental in, in the iPlayer, and the iPlayer came on board and he said, we need to be on this thing. And I remember after the programme, we spent the next two hours encoding the programme in real media, and then trying to upload it and link it and change some of the text on the website. So, you know, the iPlayer was one of our first little steps. I guess we were one of the guinea pigs of it. And, you know, we were putting programs up there and gaining an extra thousand listeners a week just by doing so. You know, and that was going back in 2006, I suppose, way back then. So, um, to add an extra thousand people to what was the radio audience for an extra two hours work was always worth it. But, as you say, you know, technology's moved on. We found a, a foolproof system of sending your music into the BBC where you get notification of whether it's been listened to, who it's been passed on to, if it's been broadcast. You know, an ability for me to pass it on without having to rip a CD and put it in the post and know if they ever received it or not. So internally I can pass it around the BBC. We can have all of these opportunities. I can look in one place and see who I've broadcast, who sent in their music, what I've listened to, what I haven't. and. At the same time, everything's all in the digital domain, so I can pull off pictures, I can pull off biographies, and all the information I need is at my fingertips. But the one thing that has changed is way back in 2005 when we were broadcasting the programme, you know, you can guarantee everyone who was listening to the programme were musicians themselves. So it was almost like a radio version of MySpace of what it was back then. And now I almost look at it and think there's no point in broadcasting that bit of information because it's only of interest to people who are musicians themselves. I want to find a story that will, if you're not in a band and you're not a musician, would you be interested in this? And if the answer is yes, then that will take preference because, um, you know, it's almost like the old adage I always say is, imagine if you went onto the X Factor and the only people who tuned into the X Factor were the other contestants. They're not. So, um, so I think what's changed a lot over the years is people suddenly realise that BBC introducing isn't all about a load of people who want to make as much noise as possible and aren't necessarily any good or aren't going anywhere. I think it's now identified itself as actually this is a great step in an artist's career. There's been a lot of music listened to to get to this step, initial step in the first place. And it's a real musical journey and all of these people are success stories. Certainly on a national level, you know, we've managed to get BBC introducing onto the internet. Got all our sessions up there, all of our interviews up there, loads of profiles up there, all the programmes. We developed the iPlayer. We've now got 40 local radio stations up and down Britain 
Saturday night, 8 o'clock, doing an introducing show. We've got six music on board, we've got Radio 1 on board, we've got one extra on board. Uh, Radio 3's Late Junction does features. Um, we've seen slots on the review show on BBC 2, we've seen slots on Jules Holland. We've seen things which aren't to do with the media at all. We've seen slots at Glastonbury, Reading, Leeds, Best of All, Creamfields. It's, you know, there's all of these opportunities, but the one thing that I personally want to see is a BBC Two programme that is not send us your music if you're writing a song and upload your MP3. There's so many people out there making great music videos, you know, on their own or, you know, with a slight budget and at the moment there's no outlet for them. So I like to see a BBC introducing television programme which is again a feeder from all the local radio acts and maybe that ultimately can become a regional thing handing to a national thing. There's a danger that um, with the music industry as it is at the moment and having not a lot of money there is the danger where if you have got 40 local radio stations and once a month national BBC introducing asks each of those 40 can you please submit one artist each and then national from those 40 pull together a playlist of 20 of the best in the country there is a danger that your big record labels fire their, all their A&R people look at that list of 20 people and think right who are the most prolific who's going to sell us the most songs and sign them so there's almost a danger and it's something that we're very aware of in introducing is are we doing someone else's work for them and there's also the danger of that's not what everyone wants you know and I think we've heard everyone in the nation has heard some very trying stories of being stung by the record companies and there's a very difficult decision um, to be you know made at some point in introducing career I suppose as to do we champion someone into a record label and ultimately hand them over to somebody who's going to profit from them or are we in the game to make radio programs people often drop us an email and say can you recommend a good artist who's doing this and I've almost got the standard reply now which is listen to the radio show because we're on for only two hours a week out of those 400 tracks that I get some weeks I'm only putting 16 songs out there and if you can't find one, one track in those 16 every week you know that is a demo of the best we've got in our area right now it doesn't matter where you drive in the country you're going to find a local introducing show to you doing the same sort of thing um, so if you can't find something in the product that we're putting out there then that's fine because everyone else is getting the end product.